This is Maria Bianca and uh, I got to understand that there are not so many tutorials on how to use Upal, a testing tool, on uh, YouTube due to the fact that I myself took a testing and verification course and we had a very tough time figuring out how on earth to use the tool. So I just decided that maybe it's a smart idea to actually uh, make a small um, tutorial on that for noobs just like me. So uh, our scenarios, we will end up taking a scenarios and we will have to model check it with this tool called Upal. And then our scenario says that, I will very quickly go through it, you will find it in the descriptions below. It says that we assume that we have two cars that simultaneously search for a parking space on a street and they can move forward, backwards and they, they have several sensors that will query uh, para, a parallel automaton that models the street layout, right? So we have uh, two cars that have some sensors that query on one side if they have a parking spot or not. Our scenario says that we have two parking spots and then obviously the cars cannot park in the same place simultaneously. So that's very important. Also, uh, we can fix or, or check, choose an arbitrary delay um, the way the cars will move and then we assume for these scenarios, only for simplicity's sake, that the street is five meter long, it has two suitable parking spaces. We can choose them ourselves or we can randomly assign them, but in this case scenarios, we just choose two random places. And then it, it takes a car one meter to park. And in the only way for the parallel automata to communicate is through shared channels. We are not supposed to have no globally shared or at least as little as possible globally shared variables in our system. It's like in any programming, uh, in a, any form of programming that we do, it's not good practice to have global variables, right? So our street, we have two cars on a five meters long street that, have, that has two suitable parking spaces and the cars are not supposed to park simultaneously on the same parking spot. So how does Upal work? It basically is like a state machine that does what a state machine does, right? It just moves states. That's it. So we have to think what does our um, uh, scenario implement. It says first of all we have two cars. So we basically create here we have a we create a project in Opal. We already have it project. Here we write any global declarations that are made, and then we also create. Project. So this this template is like a it, it oh, not project. Sorry, it's an object, right? It's like in Java, for example, you have or any object oriented programming you have an object. So we can declare this as object. This is where we use the declarations for that specific object. And here are the systems declarations. So basically, the declarations for the main. If we put it that way, so we think about we have two cars, right? Uh, that means we will have two object uh, instantiation of the car object in our system declaration. But maybe we do that a little bit later on. So, what we think about the object car, what does it have? Well, first of all, it has to have a state that is starting, right, on the street. So maybe we can use, like in any state machine, we use this state as a starting state and we call it start. Right, and then this is our start state. What does the car do again? The car starts on the street, the car also finds a parking spot. The car, after the car finds the parking spot, well, then of course it performs the parking spot. performs the parking or the parking spot, you can perform a spot. And then, obviously, it reaches the end of the street, somewhere here. So, what does our car do? Well, first of all, it moves. 
starts moving on uh, in in this uh, state machine. So what we do, we move. Now in Upal there is one fancy thing. For example, if you want to query if something moved, you just write the channel name and then a question mark. And if you want to um, if you want to tell it to move, then you just obviously move it, as in move and exclamation point. Yeah, sorry, I was a bit off. I had some uh, something to fix, but uh, as I was saying before, um, this is a channel, and the channels have to be declared in the project declarations. Otherwise, we won't know. Uh, what channels uh, are in the project and how the staff communicate among themselves in our scenario. But for example, from the start to the find parking spot, state what ha what the car has to do is to move, right? So what do we do? We maybe we can call a channel called move and we say it, it should move, right? So it moves, the car moves on this channel. And then maybe we can uh, think about it and then once the car moves what uh, it should no sorry this was a mistake it should move right because it's it's a command so it's a exclamation point i like to think that upol shouts at people when it tells them to change state technically so it once it finds the the parking spot there are several scenarios, so we have to think about them. What can happen when the car finds a parking spot? It either continues on the street, right? So then we will have to make a, uh, a movement like this, and then we call. We can call this channel. Um, yeah, I have to change this stuff. We can say, okay, uh, if you continue on street, then continue on street. Right? This is called continuous street. I have to make this stuff straight. I don't like it when they are. Ah, I can't make this straight. Yeah, whatever. So, it's either continuing on street, maybe if the parking spot is occupied, or what it can do again, if the parking spot is not occupied, it should park, right? So, we make a channel called park. So, we make a channel called um, park, and then what is supposed to do, it actually parks. And once the car is park, it parked, it should also be able to unpark, right? And then when it unparks, it actually goes back into the state that says it should find a parking spot, because if it doesn't go back there, then uh, we might have an issue, uh, due to the fact that uh, it might find the second parking spot. Our scenario says that there are two parking spots. So our channel will be unpark. Right. Oi, it overlapped with park. And then it the car moves, the car continues on street, the car parks, it unparks, but also if we have to continue, we consider the fact that it might be the end of the street, that means from the parking spot state, where it's actually looking for a parking spot, if it's the end of the street, it should do what? It should just stop. So, yeah, I need to select this stuff. So it's gonna be end of street. So maybe we can put it stop. Ah, end of street is okay. Yep. So this is basically now we shouldn't call it the same thing. Maybe I should call it this one um, exit street state. So this is our very 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 uh simple scenario we can actually simulate it right okay we have some syntax syntax error apparently so we can't simulate it yet oh yeah we didn't declare you see here you can actually see your errors 
so we didn't declare the channels of course and we didn't declare what on earth is car so the the program doesn't understand what we are talking about so we will have a in our declaration we will have channel park on park move and end of street and also continue on street right yeah, I guess I should save this one. It's always good practice to save it. Uh, tutorial. This keyboard. Good. So we go back to our car. Yep, we can actually declare a clock on the car, maybe in declarations, and then we can say. Uh, clock wait or something because it says that we can actually choose a time and then we will implement it a little bit earlier that one technically breaking my clothes and then in the system declarations we actually have to instantiate those um, objects right so we will end up having two cars which means we have car one and that's a car object. It's very similar to Java, the syntax. And then car2, also a car object. And then we have to add them to the system. Yep. So let's see now if we can actually simulate. The model we do have still some errors. Uh, what is the problem now? Hmm. Channels. Car start. Move. Start. Move. Continue on street. Park on park on the street. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't understand our. Um, just let me think. What's the problem? Oi, I know why. These are, are not supposed to be here. So, this should work now. Let's see now. Yep. So we can actually try and simulate, but we don't really have what to simulate against. So we just see the two cars, right? <coughs> it's in the deadlock, deadlock. That's exactly the transition we never want to go inside. So what we think now, we okay, we made our cars. Maybe we can consider about creating two lanes as objects. So we have one lane and the other, right? Or we have two states of the of the of the street, right? So we could create another. Wait, I forgot how to create another object here. And it uh, maybe we have. Uh, I can just copy it and no. Apparently not. This is stupid. Um, how do I add tools? Help. Edit. Insert. Yeah, okay. So, I've inserted that object. We can call it maybe lane or street state or whatever. And we shouldn't forget to declare it on in our system declarations. So we should have maybe right lane, it's an instance of lane, and then left lane or instance of lane as well, right, and then we have to add it to our system, lane, good. So we go to our lane and then we have to consider, okay, what does our street actually have? So we go here and then we say, well, our street should have maybe a street beginning. We have this one. And we call it street beginning or beginning of street. Good. And then we have a parking spot. Maybe this is a state called, maybe we can call it, it finds a parking spot and then it performs the parking. And then it gets out of the parking, right? 
So maybe we can have it this way and then we will have this one will be called find parking spot one and then yeah, maybe we need a little bit of space because we'll end up adding guards and stuff and then we will eat space maybe this one we can put it here and then this one will be found parking spot one right and then here will be okay once it found it then just continue once it unparks right so now we have to think okay now this is the the interesting part we create channels but this stuff we don't tell this time we don't tell it what to do but with query if it does it right so before we used to put move exclamation point which means move as an as an action but now we actually query to see did it move then if it moved it should move into this specific state if it moved then maybe it should park And then we should query did it park right because it can park it can continue on street it can do a lot of stuff all right if it park then maybe did it unpark for it to go into the continue state oi i hate with this when this happens unpark No, this is not a guard, this is a synchronization. And then, okay, if it didn't park or something, it should just continue. And then we just make a channel that makes the transitions from one to the other. I hate this, it's not straight. And then this stuff is very messed up. Oh no! Yep, well this looks much more decent. Good! Now we should once it um, it 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 unparks, it should do what? Next thing, it should start looking for the next parking spot, right? That's the logical thing to do because we only have five meters and and this is wrong. So I have to delete the stuff because the transition is done upside down. So this is here and then we have and then this state we called it in our car what the car actually does it continues on street right so it will query it will query in the synchronization the continue on street and then question mark good that's one thing and then we should um, maybe this state will be find second parking spot because our problem says that we have two parking spots. Fun parking spot two. It finds this one, move this one here, and then maybe we can move this one in the middle as well. And this one here, and then if it finds a parking spot, well, we also have again two possibilities: it either parks when the parking spot is free or it just moves on so it will be like this and then again another triangle and then maybe i can make them a little oh no 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 yep so this will be maybe find parking found parking spot too And then this will be, I don't know, another state that we can still keep to continue, to the state continue on street. For, us, for simplicity's sake, I will just call the states differently, otherwise we'll have to modify the car object because they communicate within each other. <coughs> and then here as well, like before, did it park? If it parked, well... Did it on park and then also because of our scenario and for simplicity's sake we can just consider this 
this uh, segment being 1 meter, 2 meters, 3 meters, 4 meters because we know our, car, our street is 5 meters and then we can just put the last 5 meter and we can just say did it end the end of the street and if it did well just stop right so here maybe we can query end of street question mark and then we can call this we call that one street beginning we can call this street end good so right now we have the two states of the of the of the street or the two lanes and then the system declarations and then the cars on it so we can actually watch them on the simulator if we don't have yeah we have some syntax errors of course it doesn't find this stuff maybe I misspelled it yes I did no still okay oi I called it actually left which is actually lane so now we should do and we have other syntax errors and that's in uh, Let's see, lane. Apparently, we do not have this channel. Maybe we called it differently. Let's see. We should have this channel. Alright, we don't. We have this channel here. Continue. Yes, we do, but for some reason, lane continue to lane. Okay, let's see. It says channel expected, but there is a channel. Yeah, this one shouldn't do. Declare it here so we have how many two, four, five channels, and then here we have two, four, five channels that's correct, and then here we have one, two, yep. Then I don't get what's the problem. Maybe we left any empty space because that's also possible. No, let's see now. Weird. Maybe I should just restart this stuff. Yeah, we just restart it. Yep, so I figured out why it was not working. is because my channel is called exactly like my state. So maybe I should actually change the name of the state. And we put it straight. Continue. And I think, hopefully this should do exactly so we can actually choose to move the car on the left lane park the car one of car two we see it here it moves here it moves now the problem is that I can actually park the car two on top of the lane which is wrong right uh, on top of the parking spot one because I'm only supposed to park one car at a time so that's an issue so now we will have to think or rethink how our states move so maybe we'll have to give some guards for example uh, we will have to make maybe we, we can make maybe just two uh, declarations that are global and we say variables used for the lanes communication and then we say boolean first car is parked car parked and then both of them we, we, we initialize them to false and then we change them to true this is second car parked in the case in which they are actually true so and then we go to our lanes and we say okay uh, oh, this is not a lane this is the car and then we say, okay, the only time you can actually park 
is when, uh, for example, the, we can actually park if the first car is first. Oh, my keyboard changed again. Car parked is false and then it should update to true right this is how we do it here so the guard we use it exactly like anywhere else where we use guards and it's a guard in order to actually proceed to the next state like in a normal state machine and then we actually update it after after it proceeded and then the first card becomes true that means it's updated right and now we will have to actually arrange a bit this one because it's a tiny little bit messy. I want it in the middle. Yep. And then the same way if when it unparks we also need to maybe give it some updates or something. So our second car will know that actually our first car unparks so it could it is able to park itself on the first spot if it is free. So it says that if my first car part is true, that was my guard because I changed this value before, then I say my first car part becomes false. Right. So, yep, now we proceed to the next one. And then also, here on this state, even though it doesn't have a name, maybe because I don't, uh, this channel, I don't think it's necessary to actually give it a name because it will just complicate the the car object and right now it's a very simple it's a very simple um, example so the only time you should proceed to the next one it's when the first car parked is true otherwise it shouldn't proceed to the state called continue right we do exactly the same thing on this one so we say when one f second car parked is false then second car parked it's true now you shouldn't get confused between maybe it's not it was not the best uh, naming the smartest naming we shouldn't get confused that the second car park means necessarily the second car it just means that if for example the, the second car car number two parks on parks parking spot one before car number one parks on parking spot one then the first car has parked and the first car represents park number two so first and second are more mu much more related to the position of the parking spot than to the car itself also the only time it should park is when this place is empty and then we turn it through and when it should continue is when actually this place is um, true as in the position the parking spot is occupied and then second car parked becomes is true because we changed it before and then it should update to this is kind of trivial right now and it's quite kind of irrelevant because our street anyhow ends but it's still good to have them right so now we do this and then we can go to the simulator and try again so we say, okay, my car one moves, my car two moves, my car one parks, my car two shouldn't be able to park, but it does park. And then maybe why? We have to think about why does it park? Because that's a problem. They are both on the same parking spot right now and that's not good. Oh yeah. Maybe because our declarations are not completely correct. So, second car parked, first car parked. Uh, okay, that's a little bit strange. Oh yeah, of course, we have to do some declarations here as well. So, for example, in the... <coughs> when the only time the car should continue on street for example the first car is parked on position one then the other car should continue on street if at least one of the guards at least one of the cars are unparked right so we say if the first car is unparked or the second car is unparked 
then just continue on straight of course obviously wait oh, this is quite far away so we go back to our simulator and then we try again let's see if we messed it up again so our car 2 moves on the lane our car 2 parks our car 1 moves and our car 1 still wants to park and this is wrong and now we are in a deadlock because both cars are on the same parking spot and now we will have to figure out why and it says that it cannot find these declarations maybe we misspell them that is also a very high possibility so of course because our updates is not an word is not an if statement but it's actually an action so this should be equal not double equal like checking if it is equal but actually assigning it to equal yep and we can try now so our car one moves our car one parks our car two moves yay so right now our car two cannot park but it can just continue our car one and parks and then both continue happily on the street let's say car two parks and then yay car two and parks now car one can park car one can unpark and then end of street end of street and everybody's happy good now we have a tiny little issue our pro, pro uh, our scenario says that we should have a check at least to some great extent that will tell us the size of the street because our street is only five meters long right so maybe we can declare in the car we create an int uh, that is the position of the car that will actually just go through it right position then it starts obviously at oh, my keyboard always changes zero that's the downside of Opal is not very stable on Linux and it's a bit annoying so this one what it does now it updates our position so we do it exactly like we will do it in Java position plus plus and then also when it continues on the street is also changing position right also when it parks it of course changes position or maybe what we can do once it's part we can actually turn the part we can just make a boolean part and then we can actually set it to, to true maybe it's a good um, update just in case so we and we are allowed to make local declarations the, the declarations the main declarations are actually the global declarations that actually bring issues right column so and then we have maybe we can just give it some time here because we might want a timer if you want to run the the scenarios automatically so we can just say that wait our timer become zero and then it will unpark itself when our timer maybe maybe it's bigger than five and then what it will do our park becomes false right good and no this is from here what are you doing there so, and then, do we have any other thing to, I don't think so, and this is also from here. So, this is a little bit cleaner. And now we go to the lane, and then in the lane we will end up having the street lane, we will end up needing the street lane as well. So, the street length, sorry. So, uh, we will have the street lane, right? And then, we will start counting from the street lane. So here, 
the strict length will just obviously update itself. And then, due to the fact that uh, here will be two states, so the strict length will actually end up be becoming seven after all this uh, if the car parks in two spots. Well, then we just consider this one as one full street length, not, not as two. So maybe we can just update the street length here. And obviously here, in the case in which the car is not... In, in the car is not going to get itself parked. Also here, obviously. Plus, plus. And then, yep, any, in any of the states is good. And here I misspelled it. <coughs> yep, obviously here too. And last but not the least, the street lane will change position on this specific transition. Yep. So now we can go to the simulator and then we can just end up. Okay, we have some syntax errors. Yay. Alright. Car has an issue somewhere. Yep. So let us think what's the problem. I guess that might have to be a guard, not, yes, this should be a guard, not an update, so it's not a an action, but it's actually a check, so it was my bad. So this will happen only when the weight gets to five. So, we can actually end up... Uh, just out simulating it, and we are not supposed to get any deadlock. That's the yay! So both of them ended up at the end of the street. They are on ex exit street. Both um, the cars, the car states, and then here, if you want to, it's a very cool thing. You can actually see the transition, not necessarily in a state machine style, but in also in a, this kind of a diagram. So we can replay it again if, if you want. And then we press uh, replay, no reset first. So we reset everything and then we replay. So we can actually see how it transits, which is super cool, I think. I love this one, the way they just bumble around stuff. So we can just start a new trace. And then you can actually use this diagram in your flow and so on to actually show flow if you don't want to use a state machine. Now there is another cool thing that Upal can do. Uh, you can do in Upal, and actually means you can actually verify your uh, your uh, stuff. And then here we have the verifier, right? Am I still recording? Yes, I am. Am I still recording? Yes, I am. So this is the verifier. We find it here, and it's a really cool tool because you can actually choose. And you can actually verify the correctness criteria and how do you do that it's a, we, they, there is a language here and then I'm not sure you can find it anywhere on the internet it was quite tough even for us to find any description on how to write this stuff but here they have some language references and then we have the system description which actually ex tells you how to use the channels how to declare them how to de uh, declare constants and so on in the the um, declarations here but also in this place in the requirement specification you have uh, how to use the grammar of the specification language used in the verif verifier of UPOL so basically what you are doing you can actually check if there is no state of deadlock so we for example if you want to write that and then let's see how uh, we write the query and then we say okay uh, we have to check that deadlock imply, for example, for this specific right lane, uh, street, end of end street, 
and left lane and street there is no deadlock right so we can actually check this one our lane has no just let me check again and okay how is it called then it's called street end yep I'm confusing stuff so we have So it's verifying street street oh yep street end it's verifying syntax error I ate a parenthesis and I can check again so property is satisfied wow there is actually no state of deadlock until unless the cars are at the end of the street so that's what we wrote okay there is no state of deadlock just in the case in which the cars are at the end of the street this is what our this correctness criteria does right and we see that the property is satisfied and then we can actually write uh, for example we can write another one, another query that says only one car can park in the first parking space at a time. And if you know how to want to know how to write this language, you just go to the help and then you go to this place. And then this one is actually explaining how to how to the semantics of the right of the of the language, right? It says that this one evaluates to true. If and only if all possible transition sequences eventually reaches a state satisfying P, this A with two, uh, this one, this one evaluates to true if every reachable state satisfies P. So this is how you write it. We even have E. Yep, so you can read it up here. I won't stay to, to explain all of it. But it's some sort of, uh, yeah, it's a kind of logic once you read it through so we can just write that maybe we can just say okay this one implies that uh, uh, let's think so we actually have to check that uh, because we are talking about the first parking spot that means the position of the car should be maybe two right so we have car one dot position should be two because that's the state I think that it should reach and car one or maybe one I don't know we will see is parked is true and if this one is like this this one implies that car two um, position should be not should not be the same like the first one or car two is definitely not parked it's it's parked right or this is one case scenario we will have this one implies several things it's either the, the positions are different and car 2 is uh, not parked or car 2 let me put or car 2 position is different than 2 and car 2 parked is true so basically car 2 is parked on the other parking spot or maybe car 2 Let's think uh, the position is the car is on position two and car two parked is false. That means the car is in somewhere, uh, it, it passed position two but is not parked, so it's on the continue on the street state. Yeah, this one is also satisfied, so it's only one state at a time, one car at a time. We could do exactly the same thing for the second parking spot but I think that one is not really relevant because we just have to exchange the name of the object and then we can actually check also if uh, for example the cars sh should not be able to drive longer than uh, right longer than five the five meter street street and then that will do uh, maybe let's think we have this one, this property 
and then we have if our right lane street length it always has to be smaller than six and our left lane street length is also always have to be smaller than six right this one is also satisfied and now street length oh yeah i think i, I wrote it differently street length yep i'm currently learning python so i'm messing up with the syntax so it checks yeah it's verified how do you want to be if you want us to fail one we just say this our oh, property is not satisfied so kind of like that so i will just put all this um, correctness criteria uh, in the comments as well and i hope this will help because i know i'm a noob and i know i'm new and i'm not very good at explaining but i think some people i hope at least some people have gotten a bit enlightened by this tutorial all right have a great evening take care bye